um, I've received alone <coughs> hundreds of emails and calls about is NIH changing what the definition is of foreign components. So we, within OPERA, try to make it very clear the NIH grants policy statement um, by maneuvering some words and language just to make it clear what this looks like. So Kristen, if you could run us through that, and then I'm gonna ask you some additional questions. These are gonna be bonus questions. <laughs> So, right, so we issued a guide on this over the summer that talked about other support, foreign components, and financial conflict of interest. And so, of course, everybody said, wait, foreign components are changing? But no, foreign components are not changing. We were simply trying to clarify for folks how you de truly determine whether your grant has a foreign component. And so the way that we tried to simplify that was by setting up some questions that you can ask as you're preparing applications and doing work to determine if something's really a foreign component. So the first question that you need to ask is, is a portion of the NIH-funded project being conducted outside of the United States? And if the answer to that is no, then you can stop there. It's not a foreign component. If the answer is yes, then your institution needs to determine whether that's a significant part of that NIH project. Can I go back and ask you a question about that? Yes. Because the question is, is a portion of the project being conducted outside of the U.S.? And you said if the answer is no, it's not a foreign component. Mm -hmm. What if there are vendors, foreign vendors? So that's a good question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so a vendor typically is not someone who's performing your research, right? They're providing you with supplies or tools or samples or something that your team is going to use to actually do the research. So if you're getting something from a foreign vendor that's not a foreign component of your research because they're not actually performing a piece of the science outside of the United States. I think they're giving them a service, maybe. Right, definitely. It's more like a service or supply kind of thing. All right, so the second question, are the activities significant? And so in the definition of a foreign component, we give you some indicators that you can use as an institution to make this decision. But it's a, it's a decision that the institution makes about the research. And so some indicators include collaborations with investigators at a foreign sites, so things that are significant enough where you expect to publish together in the future the use of facilities for instrumentation at a foreign site, and then also receiving direct financial support from a foreign entity. And so those things that are significant do require NIH prior approval, either at the beginning in your grant application or post-award through a prior approval request. So I guess the question is, if foreign components have been introduced in the application and it's a new application, prior approval isn't required because they're going through peer review. Right, so getting the funding, getting your notice of award, that's the approval for what you have in your application. So if it comes, so for instance, I'm an um, institution, I submit the application before it goes through, uh, or after it goes through peer review, I decide, hmm, we need to add a foreign component. What do we do then? Right, so in that case, you would contact your grants management specialist and provide all the information about the foreign component um, how it's going to fit into your NIH research. They'll work with the program official to determine that that's appropriate for the grant, and then they would vet a grants management specialist. So this is a prior approval request. Exactly. Okay. 